All right, let's uh, oh, got to upload Tron to YouTube so it's ready when we're all done today. I'm I'm bringing green black mid range. I wrote about I wrote about the green black deck on GatheringMagic.com today. If you want to find my current list, you can check it out there. Should be should be on their front page all weekend. All right, I would love to play first. What do we got? Yeah, this hand seems great. Turn one grindstone, turn two painter with red elemental blast up. Has a Karn to grind a little bit if we need to. I think Chund is fine. I think green black's a little bit more efficient at what it does now, which is, I don't, I don't see it. I don't think there's a compelling reason to play red cards in the green black deck. They should be real quick. Boom, boom, boom here. Because even though they're a mono white deck, this painter servant gonna make everything blue. Which means we can red blast to counter counter whatever they play here. Man, Karn looks good in blue. Is he better than Jace? Almost certainly. Look how slick that looks. That that's fantastic. Mmm, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. <sighs> Should I have... Maybe I should have blasted this in response. This feels like they have a Swords to Plowshares here. I could get in trouble if they plow this in response. Like if they plow this in response, they don't have a lot else going on. Yeah, they have the plow. I should have just blasted this on my turn. That was a mistake on my part. I guess it's not strictly a mistake because like they had to have Wasteland too. If we find a red source, we can recruit her for another painter servant. Yep, the green black desiger list. It was the first list we played this morning. We played it a bunch previously on stream too. God, we're super dead. Catch you later, Nivik. Thanks for thanks for the support. Have a good have a good start to your weekend. Enjoy yourself. Need a red source right now. They got Jitty. Oh, Jitty's really good too. Let's let them kill our painter servant down the line. They're gonna need to put into play equip. I think we have one more turn to draw. Draw a thing here if I'm counting correctly. Look, Tom, they had to have Wasteland and Plow that turn or they were stone dead, okay? All I'm saying is they had to have both of those cards or we were very far ahead. Yeah, the landfall aggro list seems really sweet, alcohol. Are they just planning on porting me? Or are they just planning on putting casting him as I was GTA? That makes sense too. They're just gonna pay two and put it into play. They're leaving this up to protect their stuff here.
Mirian Crusader. Oh, they're they're probably gearing up to play and equip next turn, right? Probably have the fourth land. I'm gonna concede when we miss the red source here. All right, taxes. Some amount of Pyroblasts are probably supposed to come out here. Karn actually seems okay. Bridge seems good. Uh, Abrades, Clasms, Grim Lava Mancer seems excellent. This is not an Aether Sworn Cannonist matchup. This is not a Relic of Progenitus matchup. How many of these do I trim? How many of these do I trim? It feels like a non-zero number. It feels like some of the e tutors could go too. If we did this, well, this Blood Moon's kind of bad, right? What do you think of this? No, I like Spirit Guide in this matchup. They're trying to tax our mana. I think I like this, two blasts and three tutors. I don't think I like any of these cards that are in my sideboard currently. I think this seems reasonable. I mean, Caracas isn't amazing against us. Like we have a lot of basic lands. Yeah, Goblin Welder is a really sweet card. It offers a lot of awesome lines. Smuggler's Copter, especially with Goblin Welder, is kind of insane. Smuggler's Copter and Goblin Mulder are both both kind of best buddies. Yeah, top welder was was quite excellent because you could fl you could flip it or you could welder it and then flip it in response. It doesn't check on resolution, right? It just swaps them to targets both. Or no, you draw and then you swap it in response, so you'd still draw the card. I have some remaining bits towards mono blue control. Thanks for the two hundred bits, Foxicon. I appreciate it. Get those bumped up at the end of the stream as always. Um, this isn't really a turbo combo deck, but sometimes it is. Uh, we're actually, it's six mana to go off turn one, right? So we just need a land or a piece of fast mana to go off next turn. We just need a land or a piece of fast mana to get them. So Goblin Welder lets you swap artifacts in play with artifacts in your discard pile and uh, Looter Scooter lets you discard things. Mana source, mana source, mana source. So I want to play these out now in case they play Athalia next turn, but I think I'm going to play Goblin Welder as opposed to playing anything else here, as opposed to the Painter Servant. We're still live to combo them if we draw a Mana Source next turn, potentially, assuming we don't get Phyrexian or Vokered here.
Yeah, Welder can like, with this grindstone, transfer a mana over the course of a turn. <clears throat> yeah, not getting the Masterpiece Painter Servants was kind of a punt. Come on, come on, land, land, land. Daddy needs land. <sighs> and I can't, I can't even play this now because it costs one more. Innkeeper is great. It's very good. Super slick. That's what I use on. That's what I use to manage my stream stuff. I actually need to load my load my latest collection up into it and see what all the cards I'm still missing. A little bit of a clunky start here for the red white deck. Yep. I think I just don't want to play the painter because I want to encourage them to continue tapping out here like they have been. What'd they get here? Jitty. Land. Ding. So this is the combo. So Grindstone mills the top two cards of your opponent's deck. Then if they're the same color, you repeat this process on and on and on. And Painter Servant makes your opponent's entire deck the same color. So these two together mill your opponent's entire deck out. So that's, that's the combo finish that this deck is trying to execute. We have, so these two hands that we've had so far look like we're kind of an all-in fast combo deck. This deck's actually kind of a toolbox interactive deck in a lot of ways. Our draws have just come together in these first couple of games where we're kind of turboing them. I feel like on average, this deck's not really turboing like that, but we've just had fast mana draws in both our combo pieces, two out of two games so far. I don't really care what's in their graveyard. They're playing mono white crappy cards. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna keep this, I think. Double Clasm's pretty good. Looter Scooter's pretty good. Put it Mulligan to six. If they have like turn one Mother of Runes again, it's a little annoying. Just Aether Vial, that's pretty good for us. I'm gonna go ahead and Scooter on one here. Oh, geez. Scooter fuels Lava Man too. That's so great. So against Force of Will decks, we have five Pyroblasts. We have four Pyroblasts and a Red Elemental Blast. What if tur Turbo means go quickly? Like you turbo charge a car, the car goes fast, etc. So turbo turboing something means to make it go fast. Oh, I got punished. I should have played this out, right? I don't even know if that's strictly true. We kind of have enough mana that I might just be looting this pedal. I think I'm just going to loot this pedal, actually. Let's see what we draw. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and loot that, I think. Yeah, no worries, Apology. Nothing's awkward when you have Looter Scooter because you can get rid of extra things. I'm holding the Pyroclasm for now, assuming my opponent might plow this Grim Lava Mancer if they have it.
We have a Phyrexian Revoker here, maybe. Yep. No, I think they bluff activated. That's what it seemed like to me, at least. We're gonna get ported here. We're not almost supposed to hold back the looter scooter at this point. I guess I have this to block, so I don't really need to hold back Looter Scooter. Yeah, my sequencing here is a little loose. It's pretty bad. Yeah, Grim Lava Mancer is a card from Torment. For kids that don't know their magic history, it's an older magic card. E Tutor is a pretty good pickup here. Kids today, they see this new fangled border. Yeah, probably cheesy. A split's probably fine. There's a deck list on your screen. If you're on mobile, you can type exclamation point deck in chat to, uh, to pull a deck list up for yourself. Named Grindstone, that's fair. So the title line in this deck is Jessica. Yep. So do I blast this and eat and eat this? I kind of like that line. I think I'm gonna fire up Smuggler's Copter first here. They might have a Flicker Wisp out of here. Well, Caracas doesn't do anything to Frex Revoker. Yeah, they might have Flicker Wisp as a card I have to think about. Painter Servant is a good one, or Goblin Molder is a good one, sorry. I'm just discarding Painter Servant. I think I'm just going to go ahead and pass the turn here. Maybe stop on their upkeep. Play around Flicker Wisp to the best of my ability. I do have a Flicker Wisp, okay. So they're gonna target the one I'm targeting. That still lets this Grim Lava Mancer kill this Revoker, which is nice. They'll get to rename this on something else, but that one pretty much has to go on Grim Lava Mancer, right? Uh, I don't know the answer to that offhand, JW. I'll be right back. Aid to run to the restroom really quick. Thanks for bringing it out. Don't go anywhere.
So I assume this other revoker is going to come back and rename Grimlava Mancer. That being said, they don't have one on Grindstone anymore, which is really setting us up for this Enlightened Tutor to do some work. I did wash my hands. So if this other revoker comes back and names Grim Lava Mancer, I think we're gonna end step just Enlightened Tutor for, or upkeep Enlightened Tutor for the thing. We have one card left here. I'm going to be playing the Open in Louisville next weekend, the Modern Tournament. Oh, that's a good line, Tom. All right, so in response to this port, I'm going to go ahead and Enlighten Tutor. Get grindstone. I just feel like the matches where you need that gotcha effect are already pretty good matches. So... I feel like the matches where Surgical are really good are already okay for you. I think you're okay against, uh, I think Black Green's pretty reasonable against Hollowed One already. Surgical might be decent against Dredge, but like Kali Toss and Skews are already good there. And I feel like with only two Fulminator Mages, they're not, Surgical's not amazing against Tron. I guess we have Fields too. Are you dead? Are you dead? <laughs> they could have a plow and are just baiting us to use our next turn. So I'm definitely gonna trade here. We get to loot as well, which is nice. But like trading here feels pretty good. I'm just gonna bend this other pyroclasm. I think that's particularly useful at this point. I guess maybe I could have been the land. That's fine since I have this city. They have a plow here. They just milled two cards. But if they had a plow there, they probably would have plowed this and attacked in. That's not true. How long do we have left? We just, we are at hour 11 and a half. That being said, I do plan to finish this Legacy League. So you've got, you got four more maxes, Frozen Dookie. We've been going a long while, but I'm gonna, definitely gonna finish this league up before we, before I call it a night. Thanks everyone for hanging out through the end. I do appreciate it. Or 1-0 now with this red-white painter list. Beat Death and Taxes there in the first match. VODs are great. I agree. In fact, after I finish this, I'm going to get some food and then publish. Publish a whole bunch of videos. Then we've got a bunch of bit totals to update for all the donation decks for the day. Lots of very generous support. Watch the coverage of Athena. Is this uh, a Frolik's wife? I think that sounds right, but I don't know that for sure. This hand. This hand's a mulligan. Nah, I don't think so. I get a lot of the same 
enjoyment that I got from traveling to play a lot of Paper Magic out of playing just just playing on Magic Online, and it's far more convenient to play Magic Online than it is to play Paper Magic. Basic is land. Preordain, um, statistically a combo deck. There have been some fair decks playing Preordain these days. Have been some fair decks playing Preordain these days. Do I just turn one Canonist here? Yeah, I'm just going to turn one Canonist here. They could be show and tell. They could be show and tell, in which case this canonist isn't going to be particularly good, but they could be something where this canonist is good. And she could even just like meaningfully slow down, slow down their rate of play, which is nice. I think I just want to get Welder online next turn, probably. Deck for two here. Getting Welder into play is a pretty big deal because it basically means they can't force any of our other spells meaningfully for the rest of the game because we'll just get to swap them out with an artifact we already have in play like this Greater Furnace. It's going to be a show and tell. Yep. Hey, Mivit. Thank you very much for the three-month resubscription. A quarter of a year. Welcome back. I appreciate the support. And Snaring Bridge. And Snaring Bridge. That is unfortunately going to be a day late and a dollar short on Ensnaring Bridge, right? Because they get to attack next turn. Spell Hunter is really good at real, very reasonable against most things that aren't aren't Q block. <sighs> We're dead, right? Because I don't have any ways to draw a card. So, I, this is not a Canonist matchup. This is not a Karn matchup. This is a Tormod's Crypt and Snaring Bridge matchup for sure. This is not a Blood Moon matchup. I guess I leave Canonist in because sometimes they have the what's it called? Sometimes they have multiple, uh, they have Omni Show. I guess Grim Lava Mancer is probably much worse than that. Honestly, Vanish Show Heretic is probably worse than another one of these two. Yeah, I could have used Welder, but that didn't do anything for me. I couldn't draw the card that I was welding up, and they were getting to attack with the Emrakul next turn. So I'm aware I could have made mana and cast the Enlightened Tutor, but Enlightened Tutor puts the card on top of my deck, and I didn't have a way to draw it. Tormod's Crypt is because we need to exile the Emrakuls while they're in their graveyard in response to the triggers. For people that haven't played this deck before, we're trying to mill them out, and Emrakul says, says you can't mill me out. So Tormod Script and Relic of Progenitus. Relic of Progenitus is a can-tripping way to do that game one. Tormod Script's a cheaper way to do it post-board. Yeah. Yeah, if it, if it went to our hand, we could have, like, gotten Ensnaring Bridge, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to the open in Louisville, Louisville next weekend. Sand just doesn't do much, right?
red blast grindstone relic so we've got two-thirds of the combo pieces we need and we've got a touch of interaction seems good I guess I need mana, so that seems fine, like a fine keep. <laughs> Details on how donation decks work are here. If you have any questions on specifics, feel free. Feel free to drop me a message. The fact that Welder and random one mana artifacts and pedal lets you like get more mana is really sweet. So we draw this ancient tomb that we're aware of. Oh, I fetched away. I'm, I'm glad we drew a soul land. Glad we drew a soul land. So we just need a painter now. There's no point in attacking here. Like, we're probably not gonna win. Uh, maybe there is a point in attacking. Can we win a game against this deck with chip shots? I feel like we probably can't. Yeah, I'm gonna start attacking here. At what point do I just cycle the relic? Probably sometime soon. Yeah, so the way Relic or Tormod Script works with the the Emrakuls is their entire deck goes into their discard pile. The Emrakul triggers go on the stack, all four of them. And then in response to those Emrakul triggers, you exile their graveyard and nothing shuffles back in. If they have sneak attack here, we're pretty dead. Just don't don't have anything to interact with that. It smells like sneak attack. Why isn't there a Phyrexian Revoker in R75? It seems like an auto mission. That card's really powerful in Legacy. Not that like we would have had a recruiter this game, but I feel like I feel like the lack of a We've got a lot of really sweet toolbox creatures, so like that one gets got with both both of our tutors. Good game's opponent. I feel like that's that's gonna be my first piece of feedback, is that it seals feels loose to not have at least one revoker in the 75. We're one in one with the sweet red white painter deck. Thank you everyone for hanging out today. My name is Jeff Hogan. We're wrapping up our 12 hour stream with some legacy. If you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the reason I'm able to do this full time like I do. You can also support my stuff by supporting my sponsors. MTGOTraders.com would love to buy and sell magic online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal, I check out with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. And finally, Mac Walden provides premium men's clothing. Using code Jeff Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Google Clothes, you can save 20% on your first order there. They do premium t-shirts, polos, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, I think I think there should probably be a revoker. I think the first revoker is probably better than the fourth either sworn candidates, especially in the sideboard. Maybe even over the third main deck. I like I also think maybe if you really want that much anti-storm hate in a deck like this, that you could potentially um we could potentially put uh an Eidolon of Rhetoric in the sideboard, because that way you get to play around echoing truth out of the storm deck. Having having multiple I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to go to the July open or not yet. Yeah, yeah, I don't I only advertise things that I've used. So I uh or research. I haven't actually used card sphere because I don't own magic cards, but I've I've researched them and gotten feedback from people that have used it. Nothing good things about cards here. But Mac Walden, I have multiple of their shorts, they're fantastic, and I think I need to pick up some of their underwear because I've also heard nothing but good things about those. Painter Servant does turn off does turn off rejection. This is Painter. This is a Painter Toolbox deck. We're coming in towards the end. We're in our we're at eleven and a half hours right now. 
Yeah, three more matches in this league, including this one. Vanny Show Heretic is a repeatable source of artifact disruption that's tutorable with um, Imperial Recruiter. The reason why there are no really opens on the West Coast is because when Star City made the effort to travel to the West Coast, West Coast opens were very poorly attended on average. Re regardless of what people that will live on the West Coast will say, go look at the numbers historically. You can look them up for, for most of the time in the SCG stuff. At least last time I looked, you could. And their numbers were very, very bad consistently. If, and, and another way you can tell the Opens probably weren't profitable for them there, if the Opens were profitable to have out there, someone else would probably have picked it up. Like there's, there's a reason why Channel Fireball didn't run an independent circuit. Um, they named Eldrazi, so they're probably a Chalice on one deck anyway. So if we get Chalice next turn, I really don't want these extra these extra Pyroblasts. If that's true, if that's true, Waffle, then then uh, what's it called? Channel Fireball is a lot less bright than I thought. Yeah, yeah, and it costs it costs SCG more to like fly their people out to an event like that. So like these events were simultaneously costing SCG more money to run, and they were having less people attend them. So like it's like a lose lose, right? The long read on Vanny Show Heretic here. Someone was asking about why we're playing Heretic. This is why. Welcome to Thunderdome. Uh, I'm gonna be in this ancient tomb at this point. Welding, welding, welding. Keep on welding, welding. Do do. Think the Goblin Welder wears Mac Weldon clothing? Probably. That's why he's named a welder. Duh. I mean, a majority speaking, over over the entire country, most people don't play Magic the Gathering, to be fair. It's just like, you know, the Midwest, like, constantly sets records for open attendance, and, like, the West Coast Opens were always very sadly attended. So we'll probably smash the chalice, play painter servant, and have lotus petal up. <laughs> oh, can't be countered. I was like, that's an interesting line. Can't be countered. Good. Opponent did, did it right there. Yeah, no worries, bugger. You think I should blast the eye? That's probably fair. Blasting the eye is probably right. I mean, I'm supposed to loot there.
and we definitely want to loot because putting random cards into our graveyard maybe i should attack there yeah i should just attack and loot i was thinking i could block with it but i definitely should have just attacked and looted there right because like flipping through cards into my graveyard is valuable because of goblin welder yeah we can weld it so not crewing this up with the painter servant is wrong there so painter servant turns off the ability to search with eye but the ability to search with eye isn't why they're playing eye they're playing eye because it allows them to make their aldrazi treeper yeah so i'm i'm one card behind because of my sequencing last turn although i guess i get to put this other smuggler scopter into place so that's kind of nice like, just the card I happen to have is working out a little bit. I'm going to bin the Smuggler's Copter so maybe I can get Trixie next turn. Oh, it does. It does say colorless. I thought it only, I thought it only specified colorless in... Wait... Didn't they pick, didn't they play this for one? Didn't they play, did they pay three for this? I don't remember. They must have played this for one, right? No, they floated and then played the eye. I don't remember. Oh, before I, it was before I hit painter. Okay. That was pre-painter, got it. So I'm gonna weld the smuggler's copter back into play and block with it. Ha! <laughs> Painter turns off Eldrazi Mimic too. That's fantastic. That's so great. That's just good, clean living right there. Crew, my smuggler's copter, move to blocks. This card's busted. It's the only one that's still legal, still on the ban list in Brawl. Mmm, that's, that's a spicy meat the ball. Spicy meet the ball. Did I have lethal on the backswing? No, because I have to crew this and then. Found I didn't, didn't even need my big carn boy. Little, little did I know Big Carn Boy was not needed to finish this match. Big old, big old Carney. You're not needed here, buddy. We got the grindstone. Grinding, grinding, grinding. Do, 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 do. All right, so a braids are coming in, obviously. I don't know that Grim Lava Mance is good enough. Bridge is great. Canonist is real bad. Lava Mance prop. No, usually they don't play Big Eldrazi. I'm going to leave Relic in as a small hedge, but usually they don't play Big Eldrazi. Oh yeah, Blood Moon is real good. This Blood Moon card good. Trim some of these again. And thanks for being here, Cord. Glad you're enjoying it. I think Karn's probably a little too slow. Welder teams up with other stuff to kill things, which seems fine. I think this seems good. How do you feel about this? I don't think 
I really want Karn. I feel like we don't quite have enough artifacts for his tokens to really matter. I give this. I'm gonna run this a go. See how it feels. Nah, I think leaving in a relic just in case they have one giant squid billy in their in their sideboard is worthwhile here. Think I think leaving in a cantrip as a hedge to they might have something that stops our combo is good. Indicate the one and why, fair. Recorded for a lot of Restoration Angels in our day. Recorded, recorded for a lot of Restos. <laughs> Damn it, Justin. What do you think of Death Shadow and Legacy? We've actually played it on stream before. I think it's just a bad Delver deck. Delver, Delver's already really good at what it does. Like, you don't need Stubborn Denial in this format. Turn one, Blood Moon. Keep. I know our decks This is the last one. This is match three of our last League of the Day. We are heading in an hour 12 right now. We got Heretic, and this hand's just really good. It's not even just the Blood Moon on one that's great, just the whole hand is good. Are we having fun yet? Was it good for you, opponent? It's good for me. I got there. Think of Simeon Spirit Guide as a fifth Lotus Petal. Don't think of it as a one of Simeon Spirit Guide. Think of it as a fifth piece of fast mana. You'll be much happier that way. Yeah, this deck's doing a lot of neat things. Definitely, definitely seems super sweet. What does this deck do? So this is a toolbox combo deck. The combo is Painter Servant plus Grindstone. Look at that. My heretic is going to come and smash their toys. So take their toys. The past is buried for good reason. Yeah, get it out of here. Basic waste. What kind of psychopath plays basic waste in Legacy? This is some kind of bullshit right here. You, you are not supposed to get to play magic when I cast Blood Moon opponent. And you have a basic waste? This is completely unreasonable. Completely unreasonable. My, my advice for everyone that wants to get into modern or legacy is the same. You should proxy a bunch of decks that you think you might enjoy and then play them and figure out if you actually enjoy them or not. I think I want to braid this chalice this turn. This is a man who is sick of Bloodbird, right? Right? Multiple basic waste. All right, we're done here. We're done here. What about on Magic Online? You should you should play on Cockatrice or you should proxy them in paper before you make the investment. Although buying cards on Magic Online, you lose less of that. So like if you're okay you're okay with losing five to ten percent of whatever you're buying, like you can you could just test a lot of things on Magic Online very easily. Because the the resale value on Magic Online is much closer than the resale value in paper, especially if you're turning magic cards into other magic cards. It's very easy to get most back what you put in. No, I definitely don't think this matchup's terrible for us. We're 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 one and one now. And Staring Bridge is very good in this matchup too. I just think the way that that hand that we kept was, we were leaning very heavily on the Blood Boon to do work, and they had basic waste, so it didn't. This is the last deck of the day. We are currently heading into our. We are currently heading into our uh, twelve, so we are almost done. 
I prefer Cockatrice to X-Mage when I'm playing not on Magic Online because Cockatrice lets you play games faster. The rules automation on, on X-Mage, like, I don't need rules automation when I'm playing casually. Deal. Okay, we're getting pretty well set up here. We get to play Ensnaring Bridge into Imperial Recruiters. And then Imperial Recruiter gets Painter. And then we already have the Grindstone. So I think I'm actually not even going to bridge here. I'm just going to Imperial Recruiter for Painter. And then the following turn, we go Painter Grindstone until we kill them in one, two, th kill them in three turns. Recruit for oh right they have a uh, there was a chalice on one yep yep you're right you're right they also just put another toy into play that Vanisho can break sorry it's our eleven that's unfortunate. Just gonna play this out right because it's a one three for whatever reason so you can just like break the jitty before it dies we gave them mana to cast their spirit guide i'm it's because i'm a giver i really i really believe in giving stuff away Itty bitty jitty committee. Yep. Get jitty with it. Get jitty with it. Oh, they're going to kill our recruiter in game two. That's fine. Enjoy. I want to wait until they're inside of combat next turn to kill their GTA just in case they have another GTA in their hand they could play and equip it pre-combat sometimes these decks play multiple GTA just because they don't have card selection to find the one that they have have you ever had a giveaway on stream not that I recall I want to make sure to keep the memes going for another month keep it up Eve Long thank you very much for the five month three subscription I do appreciate it subscribers like that are the reason why I'm able to keep doing what I do as often as I do it so thank you for the support Break your toy. Oh, I guess this lets them pump it up. This lets them make it a 6-6. Six, six. I think that's fine. Yeah, or a 4-4 four, four plus kill my thing. You're right, Maddie managed to give away. Maddie managed to give away way back when on the paper stream when we did fundraising for one of the Florida Hurricanes. 10 out of 10, correct? Go to 12. This is gonna go find Painter. Get a mana source next turn, they lose the game. We have this pyroblast to protect ourselves here as well, so hopefully, should be locked up. We'll see. They could have they could have a big Eldrazi in their board. If they have a big Eldrazi in their board, they're gonna get another turn here, obviously.
They do not have a big Eldrazi in their board. They're packing it in. Pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. So two and one, dropped a match to sneak and show. He had a quick combo game one into a sneak attack for our lack of answers to sneak attack game two. Yeah, the cards always look cool in colors that they're not supposed to be, right? So when Painter Servant paints everything blue, it looks really nice. Let's see, we're going it out through the end. We have uh, this match and then one more before we wrap it up for the evening. Let's see, and... Um, we could technically use this to find an artifact land, but that seems a little narrow. Sand seems okay. I get to scry for a land. Ding. Yeah, I think we have most of the tools, JW. I mentioned when we played the match that, like, we probably need a relic to be able to interact with their... Or if we need a, probably want a revoker to interact with their sneak attack. Yeah, I love design stuff. So anytime I'm not playing a match, um, you pick blue because you have pyroblasts in your deck. Always, always happy to sign stuff for people. If you see me at an event while I'm not playing a match, feel free to come up and say hello. Yeah, we've won. We've won a lot of games today. I think it's been a long time since we've we we won this many matches in a row. We like we do okay. We three two a lot, but like. We've, we've cashed every single league we've played today. And we had uh, like two four ones and a 5 -0. Made some moto fun bucks in addition to making actual fun buck streaming. Yeah, I don't mind going out with people. I don't actually drink. Um, that's not true. I drink, I drink, I drink, does this count as beer? I drink, I drink this sometimes. I'm not actually sure what I'm traveling with a new group of people So I'm not sure what their plans are or how far exactly we are from the event site uh, We 5 would with uh, landfall aggro in modern It's a renegade rallier uh, step links deck Looks like bug delver All right There's still a few turns off a lethal here. What's going on, Plutonium? Yeah, when I when I say 12 hours, I mean 12 hours. And we're we're gonna hit the 12 hour mark in 60 seconds. We're gonna hit the 12 hour mark, so well we're dead, right? I guess I guess I could hit a soul land here. We can see do another him. All right, death rate chum and mush. Rest in peace seems good. Bridge and Karn. I don't know if Karn's good enough or not here. Blood Moon is excellent, obviously. Is Grim Lava Mancer good enough? Maybe. What are my cuts? Canonist seems narrow. Heretic isn't useful. I don't. I guess Relic's okay. Yeah, Karn's probably too slow here, especially if I'm trying to lean on Bridge. You think Canonist is good? What am I supposed to cut then? I don't, Canonist doesn't seem like it's good on paper. Like, having a you only play once blood turn clause doesn't seem very good against Delver. I get like sometimes they chain cantrips together, but often they only need to play one spell to kill you. And like, I already still need to cut one thing here. Yeah, I don't know that that really slows them down in a meaningful way to like have, like, I don't think that's impactful enough to like put Grizzly Bear in my deck. E-Tutor's good because Blood Moon and Rip are high impact. 
You're not the biggest fan of Petal? I really don't want to cut mana sources against the deck full of Dazes and Wastelands. And like, I definitely can't leave Cannonist in if I'm cutting Petal, because like I'm, I'm, I'm playing Blood Moon and the cutting of Colored Source. So, chat. Someone clip this so someone else can ask it. This, this right here. This, it is the fifth Lotus Petal. You can also theoretically grab it with Recruiter, but it is a fifth Lotus Petal. I don't need trimming one of these. Let's do that. I mean, their deck basically can't win. If we keep if we keep Delver off the table with things like Grim Lava Mancer and we have Rest in Peace out, they actually just can't win the game. Like, I agree against Grixis Delver, I wouldn't bring in Rest in Peace, but against like the Tarmogoyf, against the Tarmogoyf Delver deck, I think it's very much worth uh, worth having Rest in Peace. See, the, the problem is that while Goblin Welder lets you recur stuff, it costs you a card to do so. And like Tormod's Crypt's effect in a matchup like this isn't generally worth a card, I don't think. No, I'm playing Black Green Midrange. I posted, we played the deck list this morning during the first league, and we I wrote an article about it on gatheringmagic.com. I don't have any secrets. I'm too old and fat to take magic tournaments too seriously. I'm going to have a good time to meet people. So I'm just hoping to have a good time playing Magic the Gathering next weekend. I think the black green deck's a lot of fun and it's fairly competitive. Yeah, getting Blood Moon seems decent here because I can Blood Moon with Pyroblast up, right? Like, if, if they don't put a threat into play here, I think going to get Blood Moon is good. Oh, they don't have a land. Well, that's great. God, I've never gotten to play Blood Moon with Counter Backup before. This feels great. Your move, Yugi boy. Are we done here? You don't have Young Pyromancer. You have Tarmogoyf. God bless. What a skill game we play. What a skill game we play. Because I can't Painter and combo them with Red Elemental Blast up and Blood Moon effectively wins the game as well. So like, I'd rather take the line that lets me effectively win the game with Pyro Blast up. Like, they're not Grixis Delver where they have a Young Pyromancer to draw to. They're just dead. MTG Mailing. With the 2,500 bits, thank you for being awesome. I appreciate the support. Let me know if you'd like to add a deck to the donation queue with those bits, or if you don't have anything specific you wanna see, maybe look at the decks that are already in the queue and let me know if you'd like to move one up to see it sooner. Because the people who support the content here get to pick the order and that content gets played. I really appreciate that, thank you. Hope everyone's having a good evening. Thanks for sticking out through the end. This is gonna be one of our, our last matches of the evening. Got one more after this one before I wrap it up. I'm going on for a little over 12 hours now. Played a bunch of Modern earlier today and we're closing out with some Legacy. If you didn't catch all the Modern, be sure to head on over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland. All the stuff gets archived there. Hey, Spensky43, thanks for the Twitch Prime support. I know there's a lot of excellent people producing content on Twitch right now, so I appreciate you choosing to support mine with your Twitch Prime this month. How'd the Tassiger deck perform? We, I, I have never done worse than four and one with the Tassiger deck, and I think we've played it in four or five leagues at this point. The deck's very consistent, plays a bunch of very powerful cards. When will be up on YouTube? Yeah, usually a half hour to 45 minutes after I'm done. How's the Hearthstone content doing on YouTube? It's doing, um, it's doing medium, but it's also new. I wasn't, I'm not expecting the Hearthstone content to be super popular right off the bat. Like the channel's not known for Hearthstone content. So I, I, my, my plan is to give Hearthstone a real try for two months. So between now and the end of June, and I'll reassess how it's doing at the end of June to see if it, uh, to see if it uh, is doing better by then. Pretty easy mulligan here. Just not enough mana sources against the Wasteland Days deck. It seems like not super exciting, but Bridge is pretty good in this matchup. I'm going to bottom another land here. We be delving, yo.
Do 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 Maybe Waffle, I don't know. I feel like I'm just starting to drag at a point like this. Like about hour 11, I was really starting to drag. So honestly, I think I'd rather just like do another stream on another day and just like feel like a human being basically. And like people send in plenty of donations because they want to see decks they want to see played anyway. So it's like a win-win basically. What's going on Hogland is my hero. Thanks for the tip. It's a decent draw. Oh, they missed their land again. No, they didn't miss their land drop because they dazed us. Yeah, I'm just going to windmill this rip. Not close. They do have Delver here. So, like, this is their one threat that can kill us through a rest in peace. I get to play this in Staring Bridge through a daze next turn, though, which is nice. No Delver flip. We have Red Elemental Blast and Pyro Blast in my deck to make this die. I'm going to go ahead and take two damage here just so they can't daze me. Maybe I'm supposed to play around Spell Piercer too. Nah, they probably don't have Spell Pierce in their, their Thought Seize Him deck. Blue Red Kiln Fiend seems like another fragile all in combo deck that a lot of people play. I don't know. If your deck can kill someone in a linear manner by turn three, goldfishing some amount of the time, it's probably fine. They flip to him to Torak. They have an abrupt decay. They must have an abrupt decay, right? Because flipping means they can't attack if they don't have abrupt decay. Yep. I think the modern challenge is a dumpster fire EV of an event because of how large it is. And if you, that's a great fucking draw. If you want to, if you want to just play modern for fun on Magic Online, you're much better off. You're much better off um, just playing leagues all day rather than spending your time playing the challenge. The win percentage that you have to get in the modern challenge because of how large it is to see a return on your investment is very high. Things like the Legacy Challenge and the Vintage Challenge are much better value because they're smaller events, but the Modern Challenge is very large because Modern is the most popular format. And Wizards of the Coast doesn't scale prizes with the size of the event. So if he says... This deck's sweet, JMP. I, I mean, you probably know that, but this deck is sweet, just so, just so we're clear. This deck seems great. What about the Pupper Challenge? I actually don't know how large the Pupper Challenge is offhand. It's probably big enough that it's not worth playing in. Anything, anything over a hundred, anything over like 80 players, probably I wouldn't consider worth playing in for how much they charge and what the prices are. I am actually going to hold that because we might play a smuggler's copter and beat them to death with it this game. Maybe I'd have to play a lot more games with it before I consider taking it to a tournament, but it seems like it has all the tools you need to be competitive. All right, sweet. We're three and one. I, I'm pretty sure that means we've cashed every single league today. Um, I'm tired. It's late. These are sponsors. Ink Gaming's great. Save 12% on all sorts of stuff. Card Sphere, they... Turn your magic cards and other magic cards and cash. Or like Puka Trade without the bullshit. They let you cash stuff out. It's a great great setup, great site, great service. Stream is made possible by these wonderful faces on the banner. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, for sticking out through the end. I've got one more match in me before I finally find a meal today. I've been snacking on stuff all day. So if you missed any of it, it'll go all go up on the YouTubes. I'm going to find something to eat here after I finish. So expect things to be published on YouTube probably a half hour or so after after I'm all done. And if you're waiting for me to respond to messages, I might not I might not respond to messages until tomorrow morning. 
We'll see what Christy is up to. I could, believe it or not, I could probably use a shower after standing and standing here for 12 hours. Uh, she was playing Sneak and Show. I'm tired, here's some banners. Look, the sponsors on this stream get such a great value because all of those sponsors, they started giving me money when I was only streaming 10 to 15 hours a week. And now I'm streaming 40 hours a week. So they get plenty of value. They get plenty of value. It is nine o'clock here. My tiny people are sleeping. My tiny people are sleeping. Tomorrow will be a tiny people family day. This hand seems great. This deck is a hoot. It's just playing a lot. Of, it's just playing a really sweet combination of cards. We lost to this deck on stream a while back on a legacy stream. And I was like, this deck looks awesome. And it's definitely played out being awesome. This is the most competitive and interesting legacy deck has felt to me in some time. All of the really interesting legacy decks that I've played recently, they're just so much worse than the Death Rate Shaman Mush decks, but this deck has some neat things going on and it feels reasonably powerful. There's, there's a non-zero chance they're not actually asleep yet. On Friday nights, we, uh, we spoil them a touch usually and let them take their tablets to bed because they don't have anything to do tomorrow morning. So if I've, if I've met Declan before, and believe me, I have, he's probably still watching something on his tablet, Jake, too. Every time I play a legacy deck like this, I'm always like, man, it's a damn shame Wizard hates legacy and wants it to die because these decks are so interesting and neat. It's a damn shame Wizards of the Coast wants this format to die. Four color control maybe, could be blue black land still too. Someone actually sent me in another Bomberman list that doesn't have bubble loops in it, which would be much more playable on Magic Online. So I'm, I'm, ex I'm excited to play that one when we, get, when we get to it in the queue. Seems neat. There's always a ton of sweet things in the queue. If you're just looking for sweet decks to try yourself, you should pop the, just pop the queue open and cruise, you know? Just like see what other people have sent in. I don't think that's true, Metalix. I think they hate Pauper as much as they hate Legacy. Like, these are formats that they don't feel like they can monetize regardless of the fact that they actually could or not. What am I supposed to get here? It's probably just Painter Servant, right? So I can Red Blast whatever I want. If they play a Snapcaster Mage here, I'm going to Pyroblast it just so they can't fit Snap Fatal Push my Smuggler's Copter. The, the scooters have been good. You should uh, go back and watch the match that we played against Death and Taxes to start the night. One of the, this uploads to YouTube later. They were quite excellent in that matchup. The, the looter scooters also make the fact that we're playing some slightly awkward toolbox creatures that aren't going to be good in every matchup much less awkward because you can loot through them when you draw them. You need that exclamation point donation queue in chat. In fact, I will do it now for you. Yeah, Welder would be decent. Hopefully this card resolves and we get to start generating card advantage here. The fact that they pitch Baleful Strikes makes me think they don't have much else here. They were just holding that as their only blue card. Let's punch some clock and go to work, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Zikan Sayana Verza. Oh. Oh, we found some candy, chat. We found, we found some candy. We found some candy. So, 
I think I understand the logic in saying that Arena could potentially kill Magic Online Popper, and I kind of agree with the assessment because Popper's kind of that introductory cheap way to play Magic on the computer, and Arena with a free-to-play option is going to become that cheap introductory way to play Magic on the computer. So from, from that perspective, Arena could be a threat to Popper. I think I just want to get this Canonist next turn because it makes their Snapcaster Mages unplayable. Probably just down Tick card and grab the Canonist. No, Karn is good because all he does is draw cards. He's so good at drawing cards, chat. I mean, there's always going to be some small amount of people that play it. Like, that's almost certainly the case. I'm just saying I understand from a discussion standpoint what it could do that's negative for the format. This was an excellent draw. 2,500 towards curses. MTG mailing. So I don't... <laughs> so um, the curses deck is already at the top of the queue as the heads up. The only reason I'm waiting to play the curses deck is because ley lines are bugged on Magic Online right now. So as soon as they fix ley lines, we're going to play curses. But I'm waiting on a moto bug fix to make that one happen. As, a, as an FYI. Do, 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 do. You'll notice there's a couple like red black, red black reanimator and restore balance. Like beginning of game effects are currently partially bugged on Magic Online. If you mulligan and have a start of hand effect, um, if you mulligan and have a start of game effect in your in your opening hand, it locks the Magic Online matchup some amount of the time. Are they going to Fatal Push something here? Remember, I can't Pyroblast anything because I already played a non-artifact spell this turn in Goblin Wilder. Murderous Cut. Okay, that's interesting. I can weld that back into play, though, so that seems good for me. Get out of here. Yeah, gonna give it to you. Gonna give it to you. Against the Snapcaster Mage deck, these Cannonists are awesome. Karn seems pretty good. Blood Moon's probably not good enough here on average. The Pyroblasts are obviously excellent. Um, what do I want to, what do I even want to trim? I probably don't need Vanisho. No, your blue black deck stayed the same, Justin. It's just other people upvote things too. So if you don't give them piles of money, you know, they just, they're, they sit in the middle of the pack like everything else. Heretic kills artifacts. I guess Heretic kills Baleful Strix. Is that good enough? Heretic kills Baleful Strix. That's probably fine. It probably isn't a Spirit Guide matchup. Probably don't need extra ramp. What do you think of this? I could, I could see the Grim Lava Mancers being okay too. Grim Lava Mancers are a little bit of reach. They also deal with Baleful Strixes and uh, Grim Lava Mancers or Death Ray Chummons. I probably don't need a bunch of Enlightened Tutors. I can trim at least one of these because this is card disadvantage. I don't know that I need I need Rest in Peace. I don't know what their win conditions are, but I really only like boarding in Rest in Peace if it shuts off their win condition. 
I feel like we're going to win by attacking a non-zero amount of the time here. Honestly, I could even see cutting a grindstone. I could even see cutting a grindstone, just like to get down to 60. I feel like we're going to win the game through honest means a lot of the time in a matchup like this. Heretic's free though, and he beats down any crew smuggler's copter. I kind of like this game plan. I feel like when we're when it's a matchup where we're boarding up Karn, we can afford to trim a grindstone. I feel like we can very realistically win the smuggler copter here. JMP, if you if you wouldn't cut a grindstone, I will put the fourth one back in and cut whatever you want. But I feel I feel like mediocre one three and two two beats is like a reasonable path to victory here. This is another matchup where I wish I had a Phyrexian Revoker so I could name Jace the Mind Sculptor. But we also have five blast effects, so Jace probably isn't that big of a deal. Yes, definitely JMP. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 will. We'll put this one back in the queue. Split it towards the prisons. Will do, Justin. Will do. Um, yeah, same seems fine. Sounds good, JMP. I will think on that for sure. Not tonight, though. Tonight, I'm not going to think on much of anything. We have, we have four Blood Moons and a Rest in Peace, but what do you want for the Lands matchup? <laughs> what more do you want? Look, Justin... It came up on the screen what the name was, okay? End step brainstorm, sure. I wonder if I'm supposed to leave a blood moon in my deck just for games like this where I could maybe get them. If they don't leave up counterspell here, I'm going to jam Karnon too. Because they're almost certainly not a dazed deck. If they leave up actual factual counterspell, I won't jam into it. I'll just play like either Sworn Cannonist. This is a hymn to Torak. That's fucking gross. We wanna keep wanna keep these two. Wanna keep these two. Ding. And grab a plateau. You might want a mountain sideboard. I mean, we have we have a bunch of we have a bunch of stuff. Ooh, Imperial Recruiter too, sweet. So next turn we can go Canonist Painter. This is going to be our last match of the evening. Thanks everyone for hanging out through the end. We're currently up a game here, so we've got this game or maybe one more. Let me wrap it up for the evening. You know what you did? Drop them like it's hot. Drop them like it's hot. The salty shakers in the bin. Death Rage Shaman Lemon. Yep. I think I just get the recruiter here. And I'm gonna get put Grim, Grim Lava Mancer into play. Card on an empty board is pretty good. It's not quite Jason on an empty board good, but it's it's up there. Like a hydro blast or something weird here. Holy crap, they do. Tilt. This is someone who's lost a burn too many times right there. Right there. Show me on the doll where burn touched you, opponent. I'll wait. Stuffy doll. 10 out of 10 will do. Thanks for the support, MTG Mailing.
Man, that's rude. Although I guess I'm like kind of happy they burned that there. Unless they have, they need like bolt, right? They need like this plus bolt. Jeez, that's what they have. Maybe I should have just ticked this up knowing that they could only... Painter doesn't turn off their blast. It makes it an additional color. That's why things go go double colored. Great, that's, uh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go get my plateau now, so that way they can't call against command in response to me fetching. So if they're on bricks here, we get to kill them. They have a brainstorm, so pretty unlikely to be on bricks. I mean, depending on what they do here at JMP, I'm just gonna go get grindstone and try and kill them. Yeah, like, like pretty sure I'm going to get grindstone and trying to kill them. No, we should name blue because we have four copies of, we have five copies of Pyroblast in our deck. That's why you name blue. Because we have five destroy target card, counter target spells, if everything is blue. And they can't counter this right now. Which, not that it really matters. If they, can, if they can counter this, they can counter something else. I'm gonna go get Grindstone and try and combo them. We don't have fetch lands for it. And like a lot of the matchups that are Blood Moon matchups aren't either Sworn Cannonous matchups. We have very few white cards. And when you Blood Moon people, if you can't cast your Enlightened Tutor, that's A-OK. -okay. They can hard cast a Force of Will, you're not wrong. Next turn, they can hard cast Force Will on the grind. So I, th I think it's still right to make them have it here. And getting Relic's a little bit narrow. Like we're not we're not far enough ahead on board to get Relic and start grinding. So I think we're just supposed to try and make them have it. I think my mistake this game was ticking the Karn into Call Against Command plus Bolt range. We could have gotten a lot more value out of my Karn than I did. They can't counter the Enlightened Tutor, but they can counter what we get. If they could counter the Enlightened Tutor, they can counter whatever we're getting. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they're trying to cast a spell or what. Come on, opponent. This is hopefully my last turn of the night. Yeah, four and one. What a great, what a great record overall. I'm glad GMP said we could swap that other deck for this one in the queue because this deck is gas. Karn, Karn was gas. Um, I'm going to think about the little details. I'm just too fried to do a good wrap up here. You definitely want a Phyrexian Revoker. I don't think you want a Plains. I can articulate later maybe why I'm, I don't want a Plains better. Um, but this deck is sweet. This is the most fun I've had playing a Legacy deck in a long time. Um, especially, and like, toolbox decks aren't that common in Legacy, and this is a really, really sweet toolbox deck, so we will definitely be playing this one more in the future. Thanks everyone for hanging out through the end here. I'm gonna go get something to eat, I'm gonna run to the bathroom, I'm gonna publish a bunch of stuff on YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you didn't catch everything earlier, it's gonna go up on YouTube in the next half hour or so. Have a good night, folks, and uh, I will be live again on Monday at the latest, but probably will sneak on tomorrow or Sunday afternoon. Uh, have a good night.